Hi class, welcome to week 10 of EMDB 101. I'm really excited, this is one of my favorite weeks. This week we are going to talk about how digital media influences us, and there are many different approaches that I could use to kind of come at this question of like how is digital media influencing us. I've decided to come at it from the perspective of what we call the long tail, and so I'll start by talking about what the long tail is, then we'll talk about kind of its effect on the world, and then your assignment this week is to kind of investigate your use of the long tail in your digital media consumption. So I'm excited for this week. So how does digital media influence us? Well, first, I think it's important for us to understand what we call the long tail of digital media. And the long tail is the idea that of all the potential pieces of media that exist in the world, books, movies, magazines, you know, whatever, if we were to plot it out on a chart and rank it by what people are interested in, we would get a distribution like this. So on the left is mass media. There are a few, just a little skinny line of pieces of media that basically everybody likes or is somewhat, at least somewhat interested in. So there's media that has a mass appeal, media that kind of everybody can get on board with. But that's not very much of the media that exists, right? There's only some media that is like that. And that is charted over here on the left. So the reason this is tall is because it's showing the number of, of media, right? There's only a, this, this green area is like the small amount of media that have mass appeal. And then over on the right, there's tons and tons and tons of media that is only appealing to small groups of people. And this yellow part, this is what we call the long tail. So we call this a distribution and the yellow part is the long tail. The pieces of media which only a few people are interested in. So you can think of this access here as interest. There's a few things that pretty much everyone's interested in and then there's a lot of things that just a few people are interested in. And that's mass media versus niche media. And we can also think about it as like the hits, things that are widely appealing and media that's widely appealing. And then in the long tail, we have media that is niche, that is appealing to only small groups of people. So the world of music, that might be like Beyonce, right? Everybody knows Beyonce. Here's her Spotify page. Her, her five hits in the popular section are all getting more than 100 million listens. Uh, one of them is close to a billion listens. You know, this is, she's a hit maker. Everybody knows Beyonce. Everybody can, pretty much everybody can at least stand to listen to a Beyonce song. Um, then we have media that is not as appealing to the masses, but still has an audience. Here in the middle, we have Blackway. He had um, a song on a movie soundtrack. So you see that in his number one popular list, more than 100 million listens. But then most of the rest of his songs are getting less, right? We've got 169,000. 341,000, 50,000. This is much less than what Beyonce is getting. And then over on the right in the long tail, we have an artist that is even less widely appealing. This is a group called Versus Color. And you can see they're getting, you know, four figure listens on their most popular songs. So the idea here is that there's mass appeal items in those mass appeal media. And then there's media that is only appealing to small groups of people. If we think about it for movies, we might think of like Avatar, <laughs> the highest grossing film of all time, obviously, is in the mass appeal section. And then you have some movies in the long tail. I mean, you've got tons of movies in the long tail. Most movies are in the long tail. Maybe like Eighth Grade, which made 14 million, or maybe this uh, horror movie called Soko Gorman. It's like a Canadian horror movie that grossed 92,000, but the people who watch it, you know, the people who like it really like it. Um, these are these two movies are in the long tail. Um, this long tail applies to every kind of media, music, movies, even advertising, right? If you're going to buy an ad during the Super Bowl, you want to make sure it's an ad that is going to be for something most people want. So here we have an ad for Doritos. And who do we put in it? Matthew McConaughey, because everybody knows who he is. But if I'm on Instagram, then I can get targeted and I can get a, an ad that's maybe more 
you know, niche, a Nintendo Switch ad for the new Pokemon Snap game. This is only going to be appealing to people who like games, who have a Switch, and who like Pokemon. And then on the very end of the long tail here is an ad, an actual ad from Facebook for a Flat Earth group. And this uh, was uh, served to less than a thousand people. So it's definitely in that like niche long tail. Uh, it doesn't have to be digital media, by the way. Uh, the long tail concept applies to a lot of things, including goods, right? If you uh, need pillows for your house and you run to Target and all they have is that pillow in the mass appeal section, that pillow is probably going to be fine, right? It's gray. It's not very interesting. It's pretty boring. It's probably going to look fine in your house. It's not going to clash with anything. If you had to get it, it would fit in probably. Whereas the one in the middle, it's like a little more artsy. It's maybe not to your taste. It probably wouldn't fit in in your house. And then way over on the right side of the long tail, we have the Miller's custom printed pillow. This literally only is of interest to the Miller family. Um, influencers, right? Everybody knows Oprah. She gets more than 8 million views a day of her TV show. But then we have tons and tons of influencers who are in that long tail, who are for a niche audience, who are not pulling in those high of numbers, but are still getting people who watch them. And the big point behind the long tail is that before digital media and the internet, space was limited. So this distribution has always existed. There have always been influencers who are super popular and some who are not that popular. Um, movies that are super popular and some that you have to like really hunt around to find that not that many people have seen, not that many people like. But in the past, space was limited. If you owned a bookstore, you only had the space that you see here. You can't fit every book on the planet in here. You have to make choices. So you're more likely as a business to try to pick the hits because you want to sell as many books as possible. So you're going to try to find the books that you think most people would want to buy and you're going to put those in your store. Same with movies. If we are running a blockbuster or we're running a movie theater, we want as many people as possible to come spend money on renting or watching movies. So we want to have movies most people want to spend money on, which means we're going to show Avatar, we're not going to show 8th grade, and we're not going to show Psycho Gorman. Uh, same with music. If you run a record store, you have as much space as your record store. Like you have floor space and once it's filled, it's filled. So if you want to sell as many records as possible, you might want to carry some Beyonce records because lots of people like those. Lots of people want to spend money on them. Um, you get the point. So digital media and the internet came along and made all the stuff in the long tail accessible. So now businesses don't have to make a choice. They don't have to choose whether they can show Beyonce black, you know, whether they can sell Beyonce black way and versus color. They can sell all three now because the space is unlimited. In this picture, we're looking at a server farm. This is a big building full of computers. This is one in particular is owned by Google and it holds data and it serves that data across the internet. So when you go online to listen to Beyonce, you are connecting to one of these computers somewhere in the world and it is sending the music. It's more complicated than that, but that's the basic gist of it is that you're basically connecting to one of these server farms. You're connecting to computers that are elsewhere in the world, and they're sending the data that is the Beyonce song to your computer, and you're listening to it. And because it's computerized, the space is like unlimited almost. Um, Netflix can show any movie, right? They don't have to make a decision between these three movies. They can show them all. Uh, Spotify, you know what? Let's play them all. <laughs> Instagram, they can have all these ads. Amazon, they can sell all these pillows. YouTube, they can support videos from all of these influencers. So the idea is that the long tail has always existed, but digital media makes it so that distributors, publishing houses, platforms, you know, YouTube, Netflix, like these, these organizations that leverage digital media don't have to make choices about what to share with you. They can 
show they can show and share anything and so everybody who can use these digital media, media tools has accessibility to anything in the entire distribution the mass media hits and the long tail of niches and that accessibility is not just for consuming we've been talking about just consuming up until now but it's not just for consuming because you also can create and put your own things out into that distribution you can make videos on youtube you can tweet you can record songs and put them on SoundCloud. And so you're not only able to find anything on this distribution, but you can add your own things to the distribution and other people can find you on it. The last thing I wanted to point out around this distribution is that something I think is really interesting. We're talking about digital media because this is a digital media class, but this long tail concept and the way digital and the internet makes the long tail so interesting is not just about media, but other things. For example, money. The U.S. government has a monopoly on printing U.S. dollars. If you try to print U.S. dollars from your house, you go to jail because it's called counterfeiting and it's a federal crime and you're not allowed to do it. But because of the internet, people can create their own monetary systems. You can invent Bitcoin, you can invent Ethereum, and people can actually create Bitcoin and Ethereum from their houses using specialized computer systems and make money for doing that. So the long tail, we're gonna talk about it as a digital media phenomenon in this class, but it's not just about digital media monetary systems now have a long tail. Most people are going to use US dollars, but some people can go out and invent their own currency and use that. And soon you'll be able to buy all kinds of things with these invented currencies. You know, you'll probably be able to buy a Tesla vehicle in the next couple of years with your Bitcoin. So it's not just media, but all kinds of things that are being transformed by the digital revolution around the long tail. So I want you to watch um, a few uh, minutes of this podcast that I found really interesting about um, this particular section you're going to watch is about this sort of long tail, this niche aspect to media. You're going to hear from a political correspondent, a journalist, talking about his thoughts on the long tail. And he talks about how he thinks it's a good thing. People will be engaged with uh, media rather like more than they are now um, and he says that in the future everyone will be famous but to only a small group of people because you can distribute into that niche area and those niches will find you famous but you won't be famous on the mass appeal and he says that the more that that happens the more engaged people will be and it will empower different voices to come in because you won't just be getting the mass voices the popular voices you'll be getting everybody's voice. Everyone will have an opportunity to contribute. So I'm going to have you watch that to kind of hear some thoughts on how the long tail can be a really good thing for digital media. And just to review digital media and the long tail, it's all about uh, publishing organizations and businesses being able to offer us, the consumer, almost unlimited choices. They can do that cheaply. It's um, in some cases, cheaper to offer more than it is to offer less because it's digital rather than physical. And as a consumer of media, you can become a creator of media and add your media to that distribution and find your niche audience in the long tail.